What's up, people? It's been a good second, but we have been doing a lot over the past three weeks. Uh, I will say, you know, I've been really, really busy. I've been working three jobs, you know, like I always say. i got to finance this reactor somehow. She's a gold digger, and there's not much I can really do about that. She wants a lot of money, and i got to get that money from somewhere. So, three welding jobs for you. But anyways, here what we have here is... um. Some of the changes I've been making, and I haven't been spending that much time on it because I haven't had that much time to spend on it over the past four weeks. So with that being said, even though I would love to upload consistently like once a week like I used to, don't expect it, okay? Like sometimes I might just upload like once a week or so for a little bit, but sometimes I might go back to uploading like every two weeks or three weeks or four weeks, you know? Don't expect any type of consistency from me because I really don't know how busy I will be in the week until, you know, the week is up. So, um, right now I'm just showing you some of the changes. This is the first change. Uh, I remember, or you should remember, in my last video, the the blades of this agitator, they were more like a paddle, but that required a lot of torque. So I made this more like a blender here. And, um, and I have some issues with resistance. That's what you can hear. It's the metal against metal. This uh this wheel under here is hitting this, but this uh this will have less resistance, but it still will agitate the plastic mixture just as much. Now I will say another really big issue I've been having is you see down there that hole, the opening. Well, that's the magnetron, right? Because microwaves they need to come from here and go into the reactor, right? But the microwaves need to get in. But no gas or nothing can exit. So what type of material can allow microwaves to transfer through them, but not anything else? And that is actually something that's been halting my progress for a while. Um, as we know, I, for the longest time, almost the whole time that this reactor been around, I've been using these mica sheets, right? Because these mica sheets, they're microwave transparent, and they're a crystalline mineral, meaning they're completely inorganic. So they can withstand very high temperatures, way higher than this will ever get, like in the thousands of degree range, right? But the issue with these is they're really brittle. Like literally, watch, I could just break this with my finger, look, see? They're really brittle. So the moment this reactor is under any type of pressure, these would just crumble apart in here. Um, this is a, a an example of um, when I used to have the, the wave guide at the top. That's a, a previous mica sheet there. You see, it just kind of crumbles and makes a hole and the gases will leave through there and that's an issue. So. I had to do a lot of soul searching and, and f discovering, I had to go on a pilgrimage to find a material that is microwave transparent, inorganic, but also, you know, has some flexibility, can withstand high pressures, and um, I did try borosilicate glass, and it did work, but eventually something, it would just crack. I don't know what would happen, but it would just crack even though some, you know, a lot of sources say, oh, it works fine. I, and, it, you know, when it comes down to glass, I think the only type of glass that can work with this is quartz glass. Now, mind you, all these things are, I'm putting right here in between this look, you know, these sandwich waveguides. This is where the, um, the matrix material is put that stops any gases from leaving and allows microwaves to enter. So it turns out that... Um, I, I looked up into like radar engineering and stuff and they use fiberglass, right? So I got, I looked on Amazon and they make this fiberglass and vermiculite, a hundred percent inorganic woven mix here. It's like a fire blanket pretty much. And I didn't know about no vermiculite, right? I didn't know what that did in a microwave. I know what vermiculite is cause I've done gardening stuff with it, but in terms of like high temperature stuff, I know it's a rock, so it's completely inorganic, and I put it in my, my actual home microwave, <laughs> and it didn't absorb any type of heat, so that worked well, and so I put it in here, and it works, okay, I've done some tests, no gas will leak from there, it can withstand pretty high pressures, very high temperatures, fiberglass and vermiculite, definitely higher than this will ever get, and um, it's inorganic, so it won't de decompose over time. The only thing that will decompose over time is the silicone gasket, which is not really a gasket. It's more of like the actual silicone you just get. I just put it around there to make a seal, but you know, that's no big deal. This is the material we need to find out. So fiberglass is the material. Fire blankets work perfect for this. So another thing, 
uh, another big issue, the fact that the, the magnetron is down there, okay? I have been getting very, very poor results. Okay, let me show what. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you. This is what a couple runs of this thing look like. As you see, there's it definitely does decompose the plastics. But first of all, it takes a really long time to decompose them to this level. And there's a lot of bits in there that are not decomposed well at all. Right? It's like really inconsistent compared to before when I had the magnetron on the top. Now, why is that? I believe it's because when the magnetron was on top it would kind of like shower down the microwaves, you know? So even though it wouldn't be able to reach the bottom stuff, it would be more even versus when it's right here, it can only really cook well the stuff that's right there. So of course the blades help because I can spin the stuff and move them. But the issue is at some point, the things um, will be up here, right? It'll be loaded up here. And then no matter how much I spin them down there, these things up here just won't get any type of microwave interaction. Now, of course, another way to solve this problem is multiple magnetrons, like maybe one magnetron down here, another magnetron on this side, which is like higher up. Right now, I'm currently not interested in adding multiple magnetrons to this just because I don't think that I have any type of breaker in my house that can run basically two microwave ovens at one time. That's pretty much what it would be, right? So what I'm going to plan to do is I'm going to keep this port here, right? But I'm gonna seal it up so that way no microwaves, nothing can leak. It'll be pretty much just unused. And I'm gonna put another uh, another waveguide up here, up at the top, right? Um, and it'll still be coming in from the side, but this will solve the issue of, um, of a lot of the stuff not cooking evenly, hopefully, because since it'll be higher up, it will be more interaction with the, 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 the reactor itself because you know, the plastics up here eventually when they degrade they won't get in the way of it and they'll just be able to the microwaves will bounce off the walls and then be able to more evenly cook everything in theory um we'll see but you know that's just a theory of mine and uh another thing i want to say is there's a very interesting effect that i have yet to be able to describe how it works or why but basically when this um this used to be a fiberglass thing there because i didn't even want the stuff coming back this far but i would explain what happened when there is material right in front of anything that's covering the waveguide where the microwaves are coming from right if there's anything in front of it it does some type of electrical thing some type of arc or it like would destroy everything including including like the the fiberglass you know so an issue with this being at the bottom is every time I spin these blades, it's kind of pushing stuff in that way, right? And it's yet to destroy this one back here, but it destroyed the one up there. Now, I assume if I have this higher up, that won't really be an issue because as we know, when these things are great, they kind of get heavy and fall down. So it won't, you know, want to come up here. It was going to want to go down. So that'll help it in theory. So that's really what I've been working on over the past couple weeks, just getting this system right. Because this is the basis of the whole reactor, microwaves, right? So if I can't get the microwaves right, then it doesn't matter anything else I do. Um, another thing I've done is... I have focused on this um, this air compressor. I had to replace it. My other one broke. Had to get this out of a, a mini fridge, but I added some modifications to it. Um, the first modification is this plug right here, so I can replace the oil in there. I drained out the old oil, and I have some air compressor oil I'll be putting in there. And the next modification is this. This is a water and oil filter because I would notice that when I would pump uh, the the pyrolysis gas out of the bag or into the bag from the reactor there'll be oil that'll start to come out and that's the oil mixed with the um oil that is in here and probably some pyrolysis oil too i don't want the oil uh to be lost for one and i also don't want the oil in my uh gas tank or anything so i got that filter on there that's really the biggest change i made with that so what we're going to do now is we're going to load up some of this stuff in here and we're going to run it and the last thing i wanted to mention okay i know i've been talking for a while but gotta catch up right after three weeks is um spinning this right this is a rotary thing this is a bearing how in the world is this sealed okay i put some th some um bearing sealant on the shaft and all that and it works somewhat but eventually at some points it will start leaking gas now how do i do that how do i seal it when it's running well here i here's the the, the special potion oil okay when i pour oil in this reactor right what it does is it basically forms a layer around that bearing where barely any oil could drip out, right? But it forms that layer that stops any gas from leaving. 
So it basically makes a complete and absolute seal of this whole bearing system. And it actually lubricates it at the same time. So it's perfect. That's actually why a lot of this carbonaceous material looks so soggy and wet. Because it, it's full of oil. But that oil actually makes it absorb microwaves even better. So using oil in general is really good. And this could be... I've been using waste cooking oil. But you could use waste motor oil. Anything really. Um... So that's how I make this thing sealed, and that's really the only way. And I use this port on the lid of the reactor while it's running to uh, fill more oil in, right? This port up here, I just pour more oil in when it runs out. You know, it will start leaking down there when it burns up all the oil. Um, and, I mean, eventually I could, like, maybe use this as a, a, a feed that could continuously pump oil in or something. You know, you don't have to have the whole thing filled up with oil. Just the bottom layer needs to be a good amount of oil to stop any leaks. So... That's what I do, and you know you can use water as well. But if you use oil, you're also pyrolysizing that oil, which would then give you even more products in the end, more gaseous products, more, more, more oil products in the end. But if you just use water, which will work, you're only going to get more water in your gas and more water in your oil, which is kind of a pain to get out, you know. So that's where we're at, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna load this up and let's see. And I also forgot to mention, I. Uh... I removed the washing machine motor because it turns out, actually one of you guys commented this, or I'm sure many of you thought it, that motor spins way more than it ever needs to be agitated. So I can actually just spin this blade by hand and it does just as good of a job of, of agitation. And you don't even have to agitate it that often, literally only like once every probably like 20 minutes you have to agitate it. So yeah. There's no need to have that motor on there. You know, I was trying to take an elevator up rather than take the steps up, you know. Because, of course, in the end, you want this automated, you want a motor on there. But that wasn't even the right type of motor we want, we want for an application like this. We need a motor of with really high torque that doesn't really spin as fast. Or at least has a speed control. So, you know, we'll get there. I also uh, went ahead and I took the time to add a flashback arrestor to this. Now, the standard flashback arresters, they use a type of thread that is, I could not find an adapter to go from that thread to one-fourth, and that was an issue because all of my stuff here is a one-fourth MPT, and I couldn't find the adapter, so, you know, I was like, you know what, I'll make my own flashback arrestor. Now, I don't advise anybody do this, make their own, because, of course, it's never worth it if, if yours doesn't work out in the end because you kind of DIY'd it, but, you know, I looked at people that make, like, hydrogen um, those those oxy, oxy hydrogen uh, electrolysis things and all that. So, you know, if that works for those, it'll work for this. And basically all it is is it's two mechanisms. This is the first one here. This right here is a reverse. Well, it's a check valve. So basically it's it only allows the gas to go through one way, right? It does not allow gas to come back, only can go forward. And back here, this is the actual flashback arrestor. And this is just a tube filled with steel wool. Now, some people recommend using brass wool or stainless steel wool because those are harder to oxidize in the event a flame travels back. Now, in the end, it will still work no matter what. It's just that this is a consumable. So if I ever do have a flame travel back, I need to just replace this right away, which I, I can do. Um, so the only thing the uh, regular flashback arrestor has that this doesn't is a temperature sensitive check valve that basically it will shut off if, if your temperature reaches above like a hundred Fahrenheit or whatever like ADC or something so that's what this doesn't have but other than that this is enough and remember kind of like propane I should never have oxygen in this thing to begin with this is just insurance if something happens where maybe I accidentally pump in oxygen or something or it sneaks in somehow or I leave a, a, a valve open but, you know, in theory, just like for a propane tank, you shouldn't even need a flashback arrestor because you'll never have enough oxygen in there to cause an explosion, right? But if it does happen, I'm safe now. I don't have to be as stressed. Um, so, yeah.
All right, let's go ahead and turn her on. As you see, immediately, we got uh, vapors leaving. That's the good thing about microwaves, it's so quick always. Um, now, this is not good practice what I'm doing here. I don't have any more argon, I ran out of this stuff. So I wasn't able to flush the oxygen out of here. Now, like I always say, eventually all the oxygen will get uh, eaten up by the by the uh, reactions going on. So there probably will be a flame in there for literally like two seconds and then all the oxygen will be gone. Uh, right now it looks like it's mostly water vapor leaving. Um, but once I uh, get the gas stored, I, you can, I can use the gas as a uh, way to make the, the atmosphere completely inert. So now that I see that there's gas coming and flowing, this is pyrolysis gas at this point, so all the oxygen is gone. You can tell because it looks like steam. I close that valve, and then it should be coming through all of this. So long I don't have any leaks anywhere. And mind you, this thing has a lot of pressure in it. Not really a lot, but you know, it, it, it's pressurized because the moment I close that valve, the gas does not want to flow through all of this stuff. It, it hates it. So it's gonna push out anywhere it can. Oh, well, we look at that. I gotta leak right at the waveguide. So it looks like this waveguide, the the, uh, the fiberglass must have finally succumbed to the, the, the carbon that made it back in there. And you can see that it's leaking back here. Cause like I said, it's pressurized. It's just, ooh, shoot. Yeah, you see, you can hear it. It's pressurized. Kinda scared me there for a second. Kinda explode or something. So. Yeah, look at that. Jeez. So, pretty much, I can't run this thing until I go ahead and design this wave that goes up here. That's pretty much all it is, because, <coughs> excuse me, as you saw, it, that fiberglass, it's going to do its job only for so long every time. So, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start designing this thing, but I did want to give you guys an update um, on where everything is. And just let you know that this project is still continuing. You know, I may not upload super consistently, but I will continue to work on it and upload. Just, you know, hang in with me there. Really busy. So thank you for watching as usual. If you have any suggestions, please do comment. You know, I I've been noticing there's been a lot of views and comments recently, and I really appreciate it all from everybody. So thank you guys so much. And I will see you next time when we get this waveguide repositioned.